Hello, friends. Hello, old friends. It's Kid Lips. And it's your boy Groovies. Welcome to downtown Los Angeles, friends. Your family. Stomping grounds. Yes, it, we are your friends. This is very important for this particular video. For this video, we are your friends. We are not your legal counsel. We are not lawyers. Even though we might look like lawyers in disguise, we're not lawyers. This guy's. Um, <laughs> oh, clever. These guys. So what are we going to talk about today? It sounds like some pretty heavy stuff. Are we getting in the deep end right now? Well, it's funny. We get a lot of people that hit us up and want to know, as they start their brand, whether they should trademark or copyright file or a patent. file a patent or just get crazy legal. And, okay, so I think the biggest question is, should I copyright what I'm doing right now? I'm getting my brand started, should I copyright it? You want to take a crack at it? Yes! Yes, I would. Um, it's, <laughs> it's actually really important for you to understand the differences between what the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office actually offers. Because there's a bunch of different services that you can get. You can patent an invention, which is some crazy contraption you come up with or some idea, and that becomes your intellectual property. You can copyright artwork, and now artwork or um, creative output is usually, maybe it's like a song or architectural plans or some crazy painting that you've done. Um, or you can trademark a logo or a service mark. And that is really where we get into what's relevant to a clique. So the language copyright actually doesn't normally apply for what we do. Once in a while you might hear about someone copywriting a particular design, like a graphic that they put on a shirt or some sort of like iconic thing cool but like it's not really relevant trademarks is what may be relevant to you but i'd say you might want to think about a couple other things first so what are the things to okay consider? so when you're talking about starting a clothing line and you're talking about legal protections that you should take mostly i think most people are concerned like is somebody else going to take what i've done and copy me and start making money on my idea i think that's really like that's the point real of real fear in his eyes. that people are coming from so when you're thinking about that and your clothing line or your business, you're probably thinking about a trademark, which is your icon, your logo, your brand mark. Um, if you're thinking about taking protections around that image or that graphic, it's, it's a trademark. So it's important for you to do a little bit of research. You go on the US patent attorney, USPTO.gov. You can do some searches, play with their kind of outdated search form, try to figure out whether someone already has a logo that looks like yours. Do some research on the internet. Essentially, if someone has something, whether it be the words or a particular graphic that looks really close to what you have, and it's in the same market, so like the same product type, if they're also selling clothing, then you might have an issue. So good to do that research up front before you settle on your graphic. And once you come up with the logo that you want to work with, then Get your business cards made. It's, Get some labels made, right? It's definitely like an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And what we mean by that is it's definitely worthwhile to check up front. Any fears or worries you have should be directed, especially at the beginning of starting a clothing line, towards finding existing people who are doing something really similar to you. And as long as you're fairly certain that your, your mark, your logo, your graphic is unique to you, you should feel pretty good about using it, using it in a public way, meaning like putting it on your clothing that you're producing. Like a Wobble label is a great example. Getting that Wobble label put on there and stitched on there. Because the interesting thing about trademarks is you need to actually use them for them to be valuable. Right. Um, in fact, you don't even need to have a trademark. If you're using that symbol to denote that that good comes from you, um, and you've been using it for a long time, you actually have some protections just because you've been out in the marketplace using it. So overwhelmingly, use is the most important thing. So once you've identified that you're the unique kind of originator of that logo, that graphic, use it. Totally. Make sure it's attached to everything. Also, if you put the little TM next to it, I know it doesn't always look great in designs, but certainly like on your website or on web graphics, getting that TM in there, uh, the trademark, it yeah. demonstrates use. It's pretty cool. I mean, you can basically be protected just by using that logo and getting it out in the world. Now, if you want to spend a couple hundred dollars and get it officially trademarked by the U.S. government, you can do that. The way that works is you'll submit uh, your logo as a graphic. You'll submit photos of it actually being used on your product. So you need to have those labels. You need to have 
hang tag, something to show it being used. And then it'll go out for publication. And this is when the world can look at it and say, okay, I'm not going to dispute that. Or someone could come back and be like, whoa, I already have a brand called Aplique. These guys are biting me off. This is my this is my logo, and then you might have to change or settle it somehow. <laughs> yeah, or hopefully you're good and you can move forward. What happened actually uh, was what, I you have some history. Yeah, on it. I mean like Let's I speak on the history. Now. Like originally, right. I started this custom hoodie company in college, and it was called Delph, named after Philadelphia where I was living. And I was making these hoodies with Delph. I had a really cool tag. It was Delph. The website was Delphness.com. <laughs> Cool. Hotness. It was really cool. And go, then, go on GoDaddy, go buy that out from under. Yeah, exactly. You let it expire. It was a great, it was a great thing. And then I went to go trademark Delph at this really cool logo, and it turned out there was already a company that sold hoodies called Delph, D-E-L-F, and mine was D-E-L-P-H. But I got rejected because it's the same, sounds the same, and it was a similar name. And it turned out there was this guy at a streetwear shop in Boston that was like, yo, there's already a hoodie company called Delph, man. I'm like, what? And so eventually I came to terms with it and we became a clique. But yeah, I learned the hard way. I spent a couple hundred dollars and you know got rejected the first time. So then the next time when I went out, I definitely did my homework, made sure there wasn't anything like this in the market and the clique was okay and, and we moved forward. Um, but yeah, that process, you get that government protection, you also get checked out and called out if it is something that's already out there. So, so in terms of like the sequencing of things, first step, make sure it's unique and you're the only one using it. Second step, begin to use it, get that product out there with sure. that trademark on sure. it. Um, and then the third thing is, once you kind of get sales and marketing momentum and you've done a few runs, you're beginning to get the product out there, I would begin to think about downloading the paperwork, starting to fill out the forms, and once you've started to generate income and make money, that's probably the appropriate time to go out there and, and get the official trademark and, and pay the money and process the fees. Yeah. Is that, is that I think that sounds about right. I'd say like maybe sell five to ten thousand dollars worth of product before you go out and get your trademark. Just prove that you've got something going. Your logo starts to get a little traction. People start to know about you. So I'd say that's a smart pro process. And then as far as copyright goes. You know, check out the website, see if that makes sense for you. If you have particular artwork that you really want to make your own, I'd say if it's artwork that you're planning to only run one piece of art, and your whole company's based on that art, and it's not the logo, but it's like a special graphic, yeah, you may want to copyright it. But for the most part, you know, it's probably not relevant, it's probably not necessary. There's a couple things to keep in mind about duration. Copyrights last, um, I believe... 70 years? 70 years after you've passed away. After the death of the author. After the death of the author. And a trademark lasts as long as it's being used. Forever. As so, long as you use it, it's right. yours. But it's also important to keep in mind, if you stop using it or you stop selling your brand, someone else can come along and be like, well, oh, this is mine now. So something to be sensitive to, you know, if it's in the marketplace, it's yours. But, you know, if someone else could snag it if you're not using it. Yeah, and so I would just definitely keep that in mind. Like demonstrating use of your mark is the hands down most important thing. So uh, get after that. It's also one of the reasons why we tell brands to kind of get started with 100 woven labels. Really make sure you have your logo nailed down, make sure it works for you, for your market, totally. and get it on products. You, like, you can just print your logo across a t-shirt, but having the woven label make sure it goes on every product, every time, Absolutely. super powerful. It, it's one of the reasons kind of behind the scenes why we, why we recommend that folks start there. Totally. So. Absolutely. Some of the insights. Great, great point. Definitely. So, have you already tried this process? Have you had horror stories? Have you had your trademark rejected? Have you done a copyright? Like, you got patents? <laughs> I want to hear about it. Post it in the comments. Tell us about what you're up to with, yeah. the, with the government. You know? Sure. Um, any lawyers out there in the mix that want to add to this? Like, any additional points? Feel free to let that, let us know. Please subscribe. We're always putting out fun videos. We want to get to know you guys and check out our channel and learn about how you can build your brand. Yeah.